Flights to Nowhere, Controversy and Conservation. So what exactly is a flight to nowhere? Flights to nowhere are air tourism flights in which an airplane owned by a major airline takes off from and lands at the same airport. Passengers can look out the window at the scenery below throughout the flight duration. Destinations include the Great Barrier Reef, Hong Kong, sacred Buddhist locations, and even Antarctica. These types of flights originated from the 2020 coronavirus pandemic when airlines decided to capitalize on the fact that people were eager to fly again, yet it could not leave the country due to quarantine. Most flights to nowhere were planned in Australia and East Asian countries, as these countries had different guidelines on travel during the pandemic than Europe or the Americas. So what's the problem with flights to nowhere? Since these flights are with commercial airliners instead of smaller airplanes or helicopters, they consume much more fuel per flight and release tons more carbon into the atmosphere than smaller regional tourist flights. And these flights aren't short either. The average flight to nowhere is around 12 hours long with a range of over 6,000 miles. From these metrics, a Boeing 737, the most common commercial airliner, would release around 381.2 tons of CO2, while a Boeing 787, the most popular commercial airliner for flights to nowhere, would release around 806.4 tons of CO2. Therefore, many people have criticized flights to nowhere as unnecessary and wasteful of non-renewable carbon resources. For instance, Friends of the Earth, a worldwide environmental organization, has spoken out against these flights, calling them essentially the definition of a pointless trip. Another controversial aspect of these flights is that passengers tend to justify their unsustainable behavior by diminishing the impact of flights to nowhere, justifying their choice to buy flight tickets by saying that it supports the airline or that it's just for a special occasion. Despite these downsides, flights to nowhere have some merit, as they can be conservation-based. An airline that does this is Qantas, which is based out of Australia and offers flights to Antarctica through the Antarctica Flights Program. These flights occur once a year and leave from four major Australian cities. They are 12 hours long and cover 10,000 kilometers. These flights are on a Boeing 787, which have large windows to give passengers the best views. 250 tickets are offered for each flight, ranging in comfort from economy to business premium, and in price range from 770 to 5100 USD. Despite around 800 tons of CO2 being released per flight, Antarctica Flights partners with the Carbon Neutral Foundation to purchase carbon credits for every ton of CO2 released, effectively neutralizing the carbon impact. These credits go towards a major reforestation project in the Yarra Yarra Biodiversity Corridor in Australia. It also supports the Antarctic Science Foundation, which helps to fund climate change research in the Antarctic. Therefore, from four flights per year at around 800 tons of CO2 per flight and around $25 USD per ton for a carbon credit, Antarctica Flights raises around 80,000 USD per year to support reforestation efforts. So what will become of the future of flights to nowhere? Many commercial airlines today do not offer flights to nowhere anymore due to travel restrictions being lifted, but there still is excitement about commercial airline air tourism flights. A poll in the United States found that around 70% of Gen Z to Gen X said that they would take a flight to nowhere at some point. But how could this be implemented in the US? And most importantly, how could these flights be made sustainable? We could follow the same model that Qantas set. Setting flights from a few major cities once a year while making each flight as carbon neutral as possible and supporting important research initiatives. Locations could be to areas most impacted by climate change, such as the Florida Keys or the Valleys of California. Most importantly of all, these flights would help raise awareness about important climate issues rather than contributing to them. To conclude, flights to nowhere can be both a controversial topic while also contributing to climate research. We can only hope that sustainable flights like these will continue to help raise awareness and eventually become more common in the future.